Greetings from Berlin. This is Ableton Certified Dubspot Instructor Fabius Beck. In this video, we're going to talk about warping and slicing audio. Warping audio allows you to take a piece of audio and manipulate the tempo and pitch independently of one another. So you could speed something up or slow it down and keep the same pitch, or you could maintain the same tempo and change the pitch to fit the key of your song. By slicing audio, we're able to take something and chop it up into even subdivisions of time, or we can slice it based on warp markers that we set, or transient markers that Ableton Live will create when it determines a peak in your audio file. So let's quickly explore this and look at the practical application of warping and slicing. For my sample that I want to warp and slice, it's uh, from one of my favorite songs. Uh, it's not actually called Turkey 08. This is a, a song by War called Cisco Kid. And it's not the whole thing, it's just a part of it. So let's preview the sample. Oh yeah. So let's take that and drag this into our audio track, drop it into an audio clip slot. Nice. So what we see down here is the waveform. And if you notice, I have a button here that says warp, but right now it's not enabled. So the sample is not warped. If I look up here, this is the tempo of my session. It's 120 BPM. If I arm my metronome, if I play this sample, okay, clearly this is not playing uh, in time with my session's BPM. Uh, so before I start warping this, I actually want to change the tempo of my session because I don't want to make a beat at 120. I think 165 will be a good start. So again, my metronome, the sample. Okay, still clearly off. So I want to enable my warp button. And once I do this, you're going to notice this whole little area over here is going to change. Okay, so I hit warp. Now I can see I have this grid here. This is my tempo grid. If I look, this is the first bar, it's the second bar, uh, this is the second quarter note of the second bar, I have lines in between here, and if you look down here in the lower right hand corner, uh, this shows you the resolution of the grid. So right now each line represents an eighth note. If I zoom in further, the resolution changes. And the reason for that is because if I right click in here, I have options for my grid in my menu. Okay, uh, by default it's set to uh, adaptive grid. So the further you zoom in, the more narrow the grid gets. This is pretty useful, so I just leave it there. So in addition to that, we have our grid. We also have a warp marker right here, this little yellow marker. If you double click anywhere on your audio, you can create these warp markers. All right, right now we just want one. And we also have these transient markers. If we look closely, we can see these little gray lines. And like I said before, Ableton Live creates these transient markers when it determines a peak in your audio file. So if you bring in, you know, drums, for instance, normally the transient markers are going to fall on your kicks, your snares, your hi-hats, and any percussive elements. So now that you know that, our goal here is to first establish the one, okay? Where should the sample start? Right now, I don't think it's starting in the right place. The one, if you look at my grid, is right here. So let's play the sample. Okay, uh, clearly it's not starting where it should. I think it should start right here. Yeah, so I'm going to hover above this transient marker here. All right, I'm going to right click to bring up my contextual menu. And I'm going to select set 111 here. All right, and what this will do is move my one, okay, the beginning of the sample where it should start at. It's going to move it to where I've just selected. All right, now it's still not on beat, okay? Just by doing that, it didn't automatically make it on beat. So I have a few options here. I could either grab these transient markers, just hover over them, click with my mouse, and then I can start dragging and stretching this audio along the grid. This is very helpful when you're dealing with audio that hasn't been quantized or played to a metronome. Let me undo that. Or I could do something else. Now, when you're dealing with uh, things that have been quantized, um, especially when you're dealing with uh, like house music, hip hop, uh, a lot of electronic stuff where there's a very consistent and easy to find tempo, 
All you really have to do at this point is right click at the one that you've established and then go to warp from here straight. Most of the time, if there's a consistent tempo, it's been recorded to a click, it's been quantized, you can do these two things and the audio will be warped and it'll be on beat. So let's see how this works with our sample here. Warp from here straight. We look at the audio, the audio has shifted and it looks like this might've actually worked. So let's play this and see if it's on. Okay, that's actually not too bad, all right? So what I'm gonna do is enable my loop now, which is right here, and we can see this is my loop bracket, all right? I can either change the loop length by moving this bracket. I can move the beginning, I can move the end, I can move the entire loop length, or I can just change the loop position, which is the start point and the loop length down here, all right? So I don't know if I necessarily want all eight bars of this to loop. And to be honest with you, I don't want this to loop at all. What I intend to do is actually slice this so then I can play this in a different pattern and make it sound more like a drum beat as opposed to just an eight bar loop, okay? Uh, I wanna lessen my chances of getting sued <laughs> as much as possible, okay? So this would just be the beginning of a very, very long process of making this sound like something else. So from here, let's play our little loop. Let's actually play the loop. All right, now if we notice, the end of the loop, it's a bit abrupt, okay? Uh, it's not quite all the way on. Now the thing is, is that I like the timing of everything up until the very end of the loop, right around here, okay? So how can I make it so that the end of the loop change the timing of that without affecting the timing of everything else? Well, I can just place another warp marker, let's say right here. No, maybe even right here, all right? Now by doing that, I have one marker, uh, warp marker here at the beginning. I have another one right here, okay? If I grab one of these transient markers, click on it, and start moving the audio after the second warp marker, you notice it doesn't affect the timing of anything before, okay? So that's a very useful tool if you wanna manipulate the timing of some audio that you have. Uh, again, especially for drums, it's great for drums because you can totally change the timing of an audio sample which before was a very, very difficult and, you know, a laborious task to take. So, laborious, that is a word, yes, it is now, okay? <laughs> so let's zoom in, uh, let me see. So what I wanna do is just loop this last little section here. I'm just gonna click, highlight this, hit Command L, and look at that, now we've looped this little section. So let's play this. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna grab a transient marker here, and when I click on this and move it, it'll automatically snap to the grid. So you see what I just did? Let's undo that so you can see it again. Here's the transient marker, hovered over it. I'm clicking and holding down, and when I move it to the left, it's gonna snap to this line on the grid. Let's hear how that sounds. Okay, that's not too bad, but what I wanna do is slightly adjust the timing of this. What I could do is just turn off the grid. I right click, turn the grid off, and now I don't have to worry about the snapping to the grid. I can just move this freely. Now, if I really wanted to be, you know, just completely anal about this, I could also move this bass note here so it falls directly on the two. So since I fixed the timing of this, I'm gonna double click here. All right, so now that's not gonna move. I actually like where this is at as well, this percussive sound. And let me see, I'm gonna click right before the bass note here. The purpose for that is that now I can take this, which is actually where this bass note falls, and slide this around freely without messing with anything before or after it the power of warp markers. So anyway, I wanted this to land maybe like right here, right on the two.
Okay, cool. So now let me turn my grid back on. Zoom out. And let's see, our loop position, start at bar one. We'll make this an eight bar loop once again. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice this to a new MIDI track. So again, I don't want this to be an eight bar loop. I wanna chop this up so that I can replay it and just do something unique with it. Usually if I have a piece of audio like this that has a bunch of stuff going on, it's not just one instrument, what I like to do is slice it where the kicks are and where the snares are. So even though there's a bunch of different instruments, I can still replay it like a drum beat and use all those instruments that are in the sample to my advantage. Let me give you an example. Let's play this again. Okay, so what I'm thinking of doing is placing a warp marker because again, like I said, you can slice using the warp markers that you set. So I want to slice, uh, place a warp marker every time I hear a kick or one of those crash cymbals and every time I hear a clap sound. And then maybe right here, I might uh, place a few extra warp markers to get pieces of this bass line. Okay, so I'm just gonna play this. As it's playing, I'm gonna create some warp markers and then we're gonna slice this. We're gonna create a new pattern with it and you're gonna see exactly just how powerful warping and slicing audio can be. Let's do this. Let's see. Uh, do I want all these notes? I think I do. Yeah, I want all of these. Let's see. And then there's a clap there. Nice. Okay, so let's pick it up from here. there instead okay so now we have all these warp markers here now I can right click on the sample and going to the same contextual menu I'm gonna go up here to slice to new MIDI track once I do that this dialog box pops up and I have a few different options create one slice per if I click on this box I can see I can create a slice per warp marker which is what I want to do now or the transient markers every bar every half note etc so let's select warp marker now, slicing preset, normally it's set to the built-in preset, which will put all these slices in a drum rack instrument. I prefer to slice these to a sampler, so I choose slice to single sampler. I hit OK. Look at that. Now we have our MIDI track, and if I arm it and use my MIDI controller, let me just turn this down for a second. Let's see. I can hear all my slices. Yay, that's cool. All right, so it's very loud though. Let me turn this down. <laughs> so now we have this audio sliced. If I hit the zone tab in my sampler, I can see all my slices here. If I hit the sample tab in my sampler, now when I select, I can actually see those slices highlighted. So really quickly, just to kind of tie this all up, I'm gonna go into the filter global section of my sampler. I have a box here that says voices. This is how many sounds in the sampler I can play at once. Uh, I wanna change this to one. You'll see why in just a second. I'm gonna increase my release time so that I can just barely hit one of the pads and uh, one of the pads on my MIDI controller and the sample will play a bit longer. All right, and let's see. Nice, okay. And then I can go to my pitch oscillation uh, tab and transpose this as well. So really quickly, let's just record a little MIDI clip here. Let's see. I'm going to go to my edit menu, record quantization, set this to eight notes. And let's try and record something.
All right, let's see. <laughs> For the first bar, I actually had this other sample playing. It sounded kind of cool, though. We could even do something with that. Uh, but if I go back into this, there's a couple sections of, uh, of this little clip that I liked. So let's find something to loop. I actually think those first six bars could be really cool. Let's see. I'll fix this note here. Nice. Turn off the metronome. I can transpose this all. Go into my sample tab, reverse all my samples. Check this out. I could duplicate this entire track. And then with this duplicate, let's say this one won't be reversed. This one will be. We could detune this one down an octave. Let's just see. Transpose. It's at minus two right now. Let's go to minus 14. We'll go down 12 semitones, which is an octave. Let's play them together. I'm just curious. Let's see how it sounds. <laughs> That's crazy. So anyway, you can see just how powerful this tool is. Uh, it allows you to take any piece of audio, again, manipulate the pitch independently of the tempo once you warp it. Uh, after you've warped it, then you can place warp markers where you like to or slice it based on a subdivision of time or the transient markers that are there and then freely play it in a brand new pattern and completely make the sound your own. OK, at this point, I would probably go in a totally different direction with all these slices, um, again, reversing them, maybe duplicating these clips some more, running through some effects and resample them. Uh, you know, the possibilities are really limitless. So this is just the beginning uh, and to give you an introduction into how powerful a tool this truly is. I hope you've enjoyed it. Again, this is Thavius Beck in Berlin signing off. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.